I have a hand. Actually, I have two hands. And if you are like me, then you probably also have two hands. Thing is, there's people who don't have two hands, and some people want to replace their hands because they have fingernails that look like these. Thing is, you better be Bill Gates if you want an active prosthetic, because these things are expensive. I think I can make one that is way cheaper, but also way worse. Here's my plan. There's three main components that are going to go into making this hand. The first of which is the computer-aided design for the CAD of the hand. That will be creating the actual body of the hand, and I'm going to use 3D printing to do that. The second bit is the motor and control system. I'm going to control the movement of the fingers and the thumb using some sort of kind of motor that's going to sit hopefully in the palm. That might be a little bit tight for space, but we'll see what comes out of the design. And then finally, I'm going to create an electromyography sensor, or EMG sensor for short. Essentially what that's going to allow me to do is the brain is going to send electrical pulses down into the, you know, into your muscles and stuff, and on the surface of the skin I'm going to detect a potential difference and then I'm going to amplify that signal, and that way I can characterize what action the person is trying to make and make the hand do the same thing. I've given myself a month for that. Um, yeah, I'll try. <laughs> You're totally annoying. In a real hand, muscles pull tendons. To replicate this, I will use fishing wire and elastic cord that runs along these parts of the fingers. Motors will sit in this part of the hand. Each finger will have a respective motor. So with the design in a pretty good place now, I just want to quickly test if my whole idea with the power cord and the pulling the actual fishing wire and stuff with the finger actually is going to work. So I'm going to print off the thumb, as you can probably hear my 3D printer is on, and uh, yeah, let's go, good luck. I don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. So sadly I haven't designed these uh, holes with enough tolerance to take in this 2mm wire. Um, also, turns out, this is really tough, and I wanted it to be really flexible. Um, turns out there are multiple types of power cords, um, so I'm gonna go have to order a more flexible power cord, because this won't do for the back of the fingers, because it's just way too tough. Nothing will move. Mmm, interesting. While I wait for that to arrive, I'm gonna go print off the bits of the hand that can be printed, and change the bits of the design that need to be changed because of the wrong power cord measurement. So with those 3D prints done, the fingers looking really good. Um, I'm getting that snap back from the shock cord, which is what I was looking for. Uh, but the palm's going to need a slight reprint. With the cat at the hand in a good place, I can start with the circuit work. Two. I've started off by making this potentiometer circuit, which allows me to move the servo motors as I please. The servos I'm using are these 180 degree rotation ones, which I wrongly assumed would give me enough range of motion for the fingers. So I'm going to have to source some continuous rotation servo motors and revisit the CAD at the hand a little bit. LEAVE ME ALONE! The use of continuous rotation servos highlights the issue of object detection. How does my hand know? The difference between these two objects. One has a larger circumference, so subsequently the way that the hand grips it is going to be different. I'm going to solve that issue of object detection using circuitry, this circuit. By using a shunt resistor, I can measure the current that goes across this servo here. So what you can see is there's this generic sort of behavior um, when the servo is unloaded, and when the servo starts to experience resistance, i.e when the fingers would be uh, either fully closed or fully open, you'll start to see a change in the characteristics of that line. What I can do is I can pick that up in software and uh, actually filter that out. Through much CAD, 
coding and sweat, I've managed to get the motors working as they need to be. Since every object that is gripped is different, the time for which the servos have to rotate has to be different for each finger. I had to somehow keep track of the time of rotation as opposed to the position of the rotation, which was not fun to say the least. The good thing is this can now be scaled up to the whole design, so cue the montage. So I'm making steady progress with the scaling up of the system. I've managed to get the code working so that each motor acts independently of the other. So if you see, if I go and I stop this one, if you imagine it's like controlling a finger, this one is still doing its, its own thing and this thing does its own thing as well. So they're working independently of each other, which is sort of what I want. Uh, I'll probably do some changes to the code to get it working the exact way I want, but it's going well. My masterpiece. That's all the uh, motors working now, and uh, yeah. What is that? I made all this theory well made. I researched a crap ton about electromyography sensors. <laughs> EMG sensors need a dual power supply, uh, that means a positive input and a negative input because they rely on uh, operational amplifiers. I created this using two 9 volt batteries. I was able to write some code to interpret the electrical signal that was being received from the EMG sensor. There's a voltage spike that I can record when I tense my muscles. The intensity of that depends on how tightly I tense. From here, I can use a very basic classification code to distinguish when I close my fist and move motors. So I'm finally at the point where I can take a signal from my arm and put it to the hand and actually move the motor as I want it to move. So here we go. Turn the motor on. You can hear the motor starts going and then it needs to be stopped, there needs to be a counterbalance. Then it will pause for three seconds and it will go the other way for the same amount of time. and then it pauses and it just waits. Yay. I scaled that logic up to all motors and it worked. Psych! Freedom! We shall never surrender. Oh. I kept on having a problem with the thumb, or in other words, it was just designed badly. So after making some design changes... Now it's just... See what happens. Uh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, oh yeah, all part of the plan. Okay. Hands off, hands off. Too easy. It's too easy. Banana. Perfect. What's the thumb doing? Lovely. Pull, pull, pull. There we go. Come on down, boy. Ooh, it's kind of gripping it. What's up, Vija? Wow, it's so gripped. After fixing the pulleys, now we can do the final test of a waffle comb. Success! Very nice. Well, that's it. If you like the video, sub. It makes me feel good about myself.